During the time that you'll be watching this video, 500 people around the world will die. Their thoughts, their hopes, their dreams, no longer with us. About three people die every two seconds. I hope you will not be one of them. But if you are, you may take some comfort knowing that your energy will live on. It will not ever be destroyed. The total energy of you will continue to haunt all of humanity and the universe for the rest of time. Does this mean that the energy of your spirit or consciousness will also live on? What exactly happens to your energy after you die? The answer is coming up right now. Now you might have noticed that dead people are slightly less energetic than living people. There may be a few exceptions, but I'm going to tell you something shocking about the energy of your body immediately after you die that will probably go against everything that you thought you knew, and that is this. Your energy after you die will in fact be higher than it is while you are alive, not lower. How is that possible? The energy and matter in the universe does not change, it merely changes form. This is the first law of thermodynamics. Energy and matter do not get destroyed. Energy can take several different forms. The form you're probably most familiar with is heat. You feel it from the sun when you step outside in the summer. The photons of light hit your skin, and the energy carried by those photons is ultimately converted to heat, which you feel on your skin. And if you stay in the sun long enough, you'll feel it in the form of burning pain. The light that you see with your eyes is triggered by those same photons that hit the back of your eyeballs, which triggers a conversion of chemical energy inside your optic nerve to electrical energy, sent to neurons in your brain. These neurons convert more chemical energy into electrical energy, which makes up your perceptions of the world around you, as well as your self-awareness and consciousness. Now, to understand why your body after death has more energy than when it was alive, you have to understand where all the energy in your body is. Let's look at that. There's electrical energy in your nervous system, including your brain, and heat energy coming from your muscle movements and the pumping of your heart. But this is a tiny fraction of the total energy in your body. The vast majority of your energy is in the form of chemical energy, stored in the fats, proteins, and carbohydrates that you carry around in your tissues and fluids. About 20% of your body weight is in the form of fats, and another 15% in the form of proteins, and about 2% in the form of carbohydrates. All these are forms of chemical potential energy. The remaining amount, about 60%, is water in your body, which does not store chemical energy. While you're alive and you're moving around, your body is continually converting the chemical energy that you carry around in your body in the form of carbohydrates like glucose into heat and kinetic energy which is used to move your muscles like your heart, your arms, legs, intestines. These movements are eventually converted to heat. Here's how that happens. Inside the cells of your body, there's an organelle called mitochondria. This is where glucose that you're carrying around inside is converted to energy using this formula. The glucose combines with oxygen to make carbon dioxide, water, and energy in the form of ATP. ATP or adenine triphosphate is what your muscles use to contract and move. A small amount of this chemical energy in glucose is also converted to electrical energy to run your nervous system. So all this chemical energy that you're constantly expending is eventually turned into carbon dioxide, water, and heat. And if you looked at your living body through a heat camera, you would see a whole bunch of heat coming off of you. This is really true for any living organism on Earth. If it is alive, it is likely giving off some kind of heat. Whenever we create energy for our muscles or nerves, we lose an equal amount of chemical energy. We are constantly converting chemical energy stores in our body to other forms of energy. In fact, life is all about moving energy around from one form to another. Trees and plants convert light energy of the sun to chemical energy in the form of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Animals convert these same carbohydrates, proteins, and fats into kinetic, electrical, and heat energy. So what happens when you drop dead? Guess what? Your arms and legs stop moving. Your heart stops pumping. Electrical energy of your nervous system ceases. You're no longer converting your stored chemical energy into other forms of energy. You stop losing the chemical stores in your body, but when you're alive, you're losing your stores of energy continuously. So like a car parked in the garage has more fuel than the same car running on the highway, you have more energy when dead than alive. 
Now let's answer the metaphysical question about whether any of your energy is retained as conscious or spiritual energy. Every kind of energy, whether electrical, kinetic, sound, even nuclear, is eventually converted to heat energy. This is true even after you die. Your chemical energy and your electrical energy will eventually all be converted to heat. This has to do with the second law. Entropy or disorderliness of the universe always increases. Heat is the most disorderly form of energy. Thus, all energy eventually ends up as heat. But energy is absolutely conserved upon death. Unfortunately, conversion to spiritual or conscious energy doesn't appear to be one of them. There's no evidence that your consciousness is conserved in any way. The electrical energy of your brain simply ceases to be and will change form to a higher entropy or more disordered form of energy, namely heat. Now, there have been many attempts to measure a drop in energy or mass leaving the body at the moment of death to prove that a spirit has left the body. But these experiments have not been repeatable and not well controlled when they were done. The most famous of these is the 1907 experiment by Dr. Duncan McDougall where he put his patients dying of tuberculosis on giant scales. He claimed that these patients upon death lost an average of 21 grams, which became popularly considered the weight of our souls. Now he had six patients and only six data points and it was not repeated. All current evidence indicates that nothing spectacular, spiritual, or inspiring appears to suddenly leave or enter the body upon death. He does leave your body, and the chemical stores of your body do get consumed by bacteria and other organisms, and eventually turn into heat. But this heat is not your spirit or consciousness, it is just the most disordered form of energy. The body, perhaps not unlike the universe, at the end of time will simply die a very slow heat death. And we humans can take some comfort knowing that every single atom and every nanowatt of energy that we are carrying around right now will live on until the end of time.